Okay, in this video, I'm going to take you through how to set up a wall system and a floor system so that the wall and floor clean themselves up in a manner similar to that in which it would be constructed. So if you see here in the section view, uh, this is our floor system. This is the floor joist. Then we have our subfloor that runs underneath of the wall. Our wall comes down to sit with the stud uh, what would be the bottom plate or the wall itself is sitting on the subfloor then our finished material is going to run across and stop at the um, stud layer now we can add a finish layer on the wall and then these two would clean themselves up as well um, but then more importantly the outside the uh, sheathing layer osb is running down the wall so that it is running down over the floor system and then down over top of the sill plate, stopping before the foundation, uh, covering this up. And then, of course, siding is running down uh, as well. So how do you go about setting this up so that you have a nice, clean wall section? So what I'm going to do is I'll run back here to my level one and just scoot on over here. and We'll draw this up here again. So I'm going to go to my architecture tab, grab my wall tool and pull down my wall tool and first grab my wall. I already have a wall built. Uh, we've covered building walls here before. We'll just take a look at the layers in my wall so we can see this. And what I have here is uh, siding, uh, that clapboard siding on the outside. It's a half inch thick. Then I have uh, my OSB. And right now I just use the default standard uh, half inch instead of a 7 16 uh, for drawing purposes. And then the structural um, layer here, wood joist, rafter layer, bat insulation is what I use for my stud for two by six at uh, five and a half. And I'll just go ahead and I'll add in one more uh, layer here and drop this layer down. Just if we wanted to show a finished layer on the inside of the wall, I can go ahead and do that. I'll add a finished layer and we'll make this uh, gypsum wallboard. So we'll go find gypsum wallboard. There it is. And we'll make that a half inch gypsum wallboard. And we'll go ahead and hit okay. So apply, hit OK. Now we'll go ahead and just start uh, drafting in our lines. And right now I want to set this up so that the base constraint is my level one and uh, <clears throat> my top constraints that are not huge is going to be my level two. So that's set up. So now uh, finish face core exterior is what I'm drawing by. So we'll just run out here 10 feet and we'll just keep this pretty small 10 feet all around and clean this back up. So now I'm ready to start working with my floor. And now I'll go back to my architecture tab and I'll grab my floor system and we'll do a floor architecture. And uh, I had already altered this floor generic 12 inch so that I have some layers. And so we'll jump into here and see the layers that I have. So first layer I have is a finished layer and I didn't give any uh, finished material to it. Uh, if I wanted to pull oak, I could do that. But that three quarter inch thick is important. And then the next layer, this would be my OSB or my subfloor layer, sorry my subfloor layer and that's your three quarter inch and then my uh, joist layer is uh, uh, 11 and a quarter what would be a 2 by 12. So with that set up we'll go ahead and start drawing in my walls so I'll go ahead and uh, grab uh, my I'll just actually select the wall we'll go ahead and select the wall and select the wall so it grabs that but what I want to do now is I want to come back in I hit escape here twice and then I want to grab this wall um, indicator line. I want to pull that in so it goes underneath of the stud. Do not want that over top of the sheathing layer or under the sheathing layer. So I'll go to the two corners and I will pull that in so it is between the stud layer and the sheathing layer on the outside. So it's underneath. So it's my sheathing and then my siding outside. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check. Now with the green check, what this is probably going to set up is a pretty standard floor system. What I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this. And you can see that I can still see the floor system itself underneath of my wall. And this is what we've done for years now is uh, then try to clean this up and how to handle that. Um, because really the siding would run down across that uh, exterior of the floor system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run back uh, to my first floor here. And I'm going to grab my view tab. I'm going to just create a quick section here so I can cut this building in half and pull this back. So I'm just making that section there. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. And we'll set my detail level as well. 
and you can see that the wall is sitting on top of the finished material. So again, that's not accurate either. So what we want to do is we want the walls to actually run down through to what would be, um, this is that level three. And in fact, really, this should be called my TO foundation. So we'll go ahead and call that TO foundation, meaning top of foundation, because uh, it's really where they end up my foundation uh, would sit. And I'm going to have a sill plate in between the two of these. Okay, So we'll end up adjusting a few things with the height of the floor here, but we'll start working through this. So what I want to do next is I want to end up having all my walls apply and attach down to that top of foundation. So I'm going to grab one wall. I'll then right click. I'm going to grab select all instances in the entire project right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my base constraint. So my base constraint goes to the top of foundation. Come back inside the drawing, click, and now that drives those walls down through. So now what I can do is I'm going to go back to my level one. I'm going to select the floor, edit boundary. It wants to go to a view that it's functioning in. So we'll go in here. And I should be able to take and pull my wall out one way. Oh, we're not going to save anything yet. And this is what I want to see pop up. Once you take those walls down through the floor, you get this, this uh, uh, dialogue. It says the floor roof overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join geometry and cut overlapping volume? Well, yes, I do. And what you saw me do here is I actually pulled this wall back out, really far out. I'm sorry, pulled my floor back out. Once you make a change to that bounding line, that's when you get that uh, uh, selection box to pop up. You can see on this side, it's starting to clean up. You can see where my finish layer is already uh, running back. You can also see where the drywall finish layer, they're intersecting each other here. Uh, the floor itself, the stud is sitting on the um, subfloor. And then my siding and my sheathing are now running down past. So with that set up, let's go back in and set this side up properly. So with it highlighted, I'll hit Edit Boundary. We'll go back into my level one. And I'm going to take this bounding line and just drag that back out to the uh, stud and sheeting intersection. Hit the green check. And since I'd already said yes to cleaning up the geometry, I now have that over here. So that's nice and tidied up. So a few things here. Um, if I'm looking at the space in this area, to get a sill plate in there, we would definitely need to have um, an inch and a half. And what I have here is three quarters. So what I need to do to get this to be a little more accurate is I want to move my entire floor system up the thickness of my finished floor. Because really, my level one or my zero, zero layer uh, is going to be my subfloor, not my finished floor. So I'll go ahead and grab my floor system. I'm going to go over to height offset from level. I'm going to go ahead and bounce this thing up by three quarters of an inch. Now you can see that underneath of here, I have uh, a set uh, distance here. That's probably my um, inch and a half, and that's set up for my subfloor. I'm sorry, for my sill plate. Now, what we also see here is when I select my wall, is the wall is, although it's cleaning up inside where the structural materials are for the floor, does extend down below here. And this is actually where the sill plate is going to sit. So we need to then be able to pull up the stud. But if we're going to do this, the whole wall moves. So what we need to do now is we need to make this wall a little more adaptable. So we'll do that. So we'll select the wall, and we'll go back over to the edit type and get into edit of the uh, layers. And in here, we're going to zoom in. And what we need to do is we need to hit the modify button down here for modify vertical structure and hit modify. Then we need to select the bottom edge of this wall. Mouse over it, it'll highlight, select it. There's a little lock. And if you mouse over this lock, you have to wait till it turns, turns red and then select it. That unlocks it. So I'm going to do that for both the materials of the stud and the finished layer of the gypsum wallboard. So oh, there it is. And it's a little tricky to actually grab a hold of this. And I'm going to click on it. So now they're both unlocked. I'm going to go ahead and leave these locked. So if I mouse over them, you'll see that's locked. And I'll see this is locked. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the siding and the sheathing locked up here. So hit OK. I'm going to hit Apply. Hit OK. And now when we select our wall, you can see that I have options here that I can actually pull this stud layer back up. 
So if I wanted to, I could actually pull the stud layer all the way back up to the bottom of the wall, which is one way to clean this up, okay? Uh, and then this is now cleaned up here for me to go ahead and place my sill plate, which would then support the floor system from the foundation wall. So if I'm gonna go ahead and grab that sill plate, I'll just go in here to my level one, get into structural, go to my beam section, and we'll go ahead and load up a wood. Let's see here, we gotta get into uh, structural framing, then we're gonna get into a wood, then we're gonna go to dimensional lumber, and we want a two by six, and we'll hit okay. So we've got two by six showing up here, and for now, I'm just gonna rough draw this in to the outside of my building, I usually get a warning that say you can't see the thing, which is all fine and good. I'll go to my section view and then it's sitting right here. So I select the sill plate. I go ahead and rotate this by 90 degrees. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up a negative offset of three quarters of an inch. And I'll go ahead and copy that into both locations here for start level offset and level offset. And then I come back to the drawing. And what that does is it rotates it and drops it down. So instead of splitting a layer uh, level, it is uh, below it. Then I can go ahead and just take this thing and start moving it into position. Now, at this point, I usually like to use my move tool. So I can go ahead and select a corner and take it to a corner so it is far more accurate in its placement. Then I can start thinking about, well, foundation. Now, this is depending upon am I going to run a... Uh, uh, CMU foundation, or am I going to go ahead and set up um, a superior wall? Um, your superior wall would overlap your sheeting because there's an angle cut out on the superior wall, or your CMU is going to sit flush with your sill plate, which would be a pressure treated sill plate. That point um, comes down to the drawing of what you're trying to create uh, with your foundation. So, whether you're trying to set this up um, for any foundation, this is a great way to set up your, your wall system. And the other nice thing about setting a wall system up this way is you can still go back through and when you want to annotate, you can annotate to that sheathing layer and go ahead and grab the outside of the sheathing layer to give your overall dimensions for your walls nice and clean and even to that sheathing layer and set that up and keep it moving. So hopefully this helps clean things up, uh, give you a nice way to set up your um, exterior system. All right, take care.